Okay, um, I think we'll go ahead and get started. It's a few minutes after uh, the scheduled start time. Um, for anyone who just joined, my name is Jamie Wallace. I'm from BrainFuse, and I'll be conducting the webinar today. Um, so basically, the purpose of today's webinar uh, will be to go through all the different services that your students or your patrons will be able to access through BrainFuse. Um, we have a lot of people signed in today, so for any questions that anyone has, um, just use the chat box that you should see in the GoToMeeting window. Um, I know I've heard from most of you already. I've typed out questions or comments um, to me uh, in the last few minutes. So you can continue using that to type out any questions you have throughout the webinar. Um, I'll try to pause a few times to give you time to type out questions, um, but you don't need to wait for me to do that. You can go ahead and ask questions anytime. So everybody should be able to see my screen here. This is the main uh, screen that some of you will see. Um, one of the things I want to talk about first uh, is that we have different layouts here uh, of our site. So we have the same services available, um, but depending on the type of institution that you're from, you may see a slightly different page here. So this is one that will be seen mostly by uh, regular libraries um, or school districts. Uh, and then we also have a page that looks like this one here that will be seen uh, by higher ed institutions, so colleges and universities. Um, your page will look more like this one here. But both will contain the same options and the same buttons. They're just set up a little bit differently. Um, so I'm happy to come back to this page here you know, and point out the things uh, that we look at back on the main page. Um, but this is the one right here that we're going to use for the webinar. Uh, most of the Nevada institutions who subscribe to BrainFuse will be seeing this page um, or something very similar to this uh, right here. Um, some of you may have uh, a separate page for Help Now and Job Now. So on this page right here, we have Job Now embedded here within the Help Now service. Um, again, some of you may have a separate page for Job Now, but the services will be exactly the same. Um, if that's confusing or anyone has any questions about how that works, I'm happy to take those during today's webinar, um, either now, as we go, or at the end. Um, so I'll, I can take questions about any topic related to the BrainFuse services here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start with this page right here. Um, as I said, most of the Nevada institutions who get BrainFuse will see a page that looks like this one. Um, so we're going to use this page set up for the webinar today. Uh, basically, we have two services. We have Help Now and Job Now. Help Now is our academic tutoring service. Job Now is our job search help service. Um, so most of our time today will be spent on Help Now, but I'll also point out what is offered in Job Now. Um, so I'm going to start here at the top of the page and basically go through all of the different buttons we see here to show you how the different parts of our service work. Um, so again, please feel free to type out questions at any point during the webinar. Uh, so starting here at the top of the Help Now page, we have our Expert Help section. And the first two options here are Live Help and Skills Building. So both of these buttons right here will let you connect with one of our live academic tutors. So you have a student who needs help on their homework, or help going over a test they just got back, or help going over a topic they're learning in school. Um, they can do that right here through Live Help or Skills Building. The Live Help button on the left is what most students will use when they have a homework question or some other specific question they're looking for help with. And the Skills Building button on the right is to be used by a student who has a general topic that they'd like to get some help with. Um, both of these options will connect you with a live tutor, though. So it doesn't matter uh, which ones your students uh, click on. Either way, it'll connect them with a tutor for the topic they're looking to get help with. So the Live Help button right here, if I click on that, to connect with one of our live tutors, all you have to do is choose a grade level and then a subject, and then click on the Get Live Help button to connect. So we offer help with all the standard academic subjects, you know, reading and writing, math, science, social studies, um, all standard subjects. You can also click right here if you'd like to get a Spanish-speaking tutor. Uh, and then you just click on the Get Live Help button right here to connect for the live session. So we'll look at a live session, but I'm going to do that towards the end today. So we'll come back and see exactly how a live session works. If we go back to the home page here, the Skills Building button is next. If I click on that option, the page that we see will look very similar to the Live Help button that we just looked at. Um, and that's because Skills Building here also connects you with a live tutor. So let's say I choose 7th grade and then math. 
Um, the skills building page here has one more drop down menu that you can um, use to select a specific skill that you'd like to work on. So for seventh grade math, we have all these different skills here. Each one of these skills has a corresponding lesson that we've created to go along with it. So if I choose using powers and exponents here, when I click on get live help, that will connect me with one of our live tutors. Um, and that tutor will see that I chose to work on this topic. So the tutor could then load our lesson on that topic right onto our uh, online classroom and work through that lesson with the student. Uh, our lessons are just like those in a textbook. So we'll go over the basics of the topic and then some sample and practice questions. Um, and again, you can get a Spanish speaking tutor by clicking right here. Does anyone have any questions so far about the live help or the skills building buttons um, or anything else I've mentioned? I'll pause for just a few seconds to see if anyone has any questions they're typing out. Okay, um, I haven't seen any questions yet, but if anyone is typing them out, you can feel free to continue, um, and I'll address that question right when I see it. So our next button here is our writing lab. So these first two options that we looked at, your students will be able to access uh, right away as soon as they sign in. You can go ahead and connect with one of our live tutors. Um, the system will give you a guest account. Um, however, there, there are, uh, for certain parts of our service, you'll need to have a registered username and password um, that the student will create. Uh, and the writing lab is the first part of our service where that's required. Um, there are some benefits to having a username and password when you connect for the live help or skills building sessions, uh, but you don't need to have the username and password. For the writing lab, you do. So when you click on the writing lab button here, our system will prompt you either to sign in or to create an account if you're not already signed in. Um, that account, uh, when you create it, all you need to give us are a username and a password, and those can be whatever uh, you'd like. So you don't need to provide any personal information, no name or email address, just a username and password, and those can be whatever you'd like. Once you're signed in and you click on the Writing Lab button here, it'll take you to the Writing Lab page right here. Um, so the reason you need to have a username and password for certain parts of our service um, is just so that information can either be stored um, or exchanged. So the Writing Lab here allows a student to send in a piece of writing to us to have it reviewed by one of our writing tutors, and then our tutor will send back their review to that student. So that's all done through the username and password that the student creates. Uh, so for the writing lab here, to send in a document to us, you just follow the steps that you see right here. So you can either attach a document from your computer, which is what 99% of the students who use the writing lab will do. So you click on the Browse button. I'll attach a sample that I have. Uh, any standard document type can be sent to us. The other option you see here, which says from Cloud Pack, allows you to upload a document that you have stored in your Cloud Pack. Cloud Pack is right over here, uh, and I'll get to Cloud Pack later. But it's basically a storage device. So you can upload documents and store them in your Cloud Pack, uh, and then upload directly from there or directly from your computer. Once you have the document attached, you can add any comments down here in the comments box. So you can type out what the assignment was um, or what specifically you're looking for help with. And then when you're ready, just click on the Submit button down here at the bottom of the page. So this next screen pops up, which directs you to your message center. Uh, and also mentions that you'll receive the response within one business day. So that's our maximum turnaround time from when a student sends the paper in to when we'll send it back uh, is one business day. We try to be as quick as possible. Um, so if there's a tutor available and you send in a document, they might send that back within a couple hours. But at the most, it'll be one business day. Um, over here on the right is where you'll find the message center. So these learning account features that you have listed here, uh, these are all specific to your account. So these will all store different pieces of information uh, within our service here. And only uh, you'll only be able to access this using the username and password that you created. So no one else will be able to see what's stored here. So if I click on the message center, 
right here is the document that we just sent in. When our tutor sends back their response, that'll show up right here on this page as well. Um, and this right here is a sample of what our response will look like. So we'll always include our rubric form on the top here. That will have a number of different sections here that the tutor will have to fill out with comments about that student's paper. So there's a number of sections. If you scroll down further, you'll find the specific paper that the student sent in to us. And our tutor will also include comments embedded within the paper here. So the comments in the blue bolded text here are from our tutor. So that's the type of review that we give. Um, we're not trying to be an editing service. So we're not trying to fix all the mistakes in the paper. We're trying to point out recurring errors um, and point out different ways that a student can improve their work. So all of the comments and things that we have added here will require the student to go back and make the actual changes to the paper. So that's our writing lab. We're back here on the main page. Next to that, we have uh, a button that we call Send Question. And this one works exactly the same way as the writing lab that we just saw, um, except this is to send in a question rather than a piece of writing. So you can send in a math question, science, social studies, any topic here. Just choose your grade level and subject from the drop-down menu. Type out your question here. You can attach a document if you have one, and then click on Submit to send that in. So again, we'll respond within one business day. That question will be saved in your message center, just like for the documents in the writing lab. Um, and for questions sent in here, our tutors will do their best to um, guide the student as to how to get the answer, either using resources, hints, tips, um, or working through a similar type of question um, to show the student how that type of question is done. Um, but our tutors are never going to give out answers. And then next to the send question button, we have the language lab. So the language lab is where a student will go if they are working on learning the Spanish language. So you'll see here in the drop down menu, Spanish is the only option that we currently have available. So you can go here to connect with a Spanish speaking tutor to get help with learning the Spanish language. We also had the Spanish option within live help and skills building. So that was the checkbox right here. But that option is usually used by a native Spanish speaker. So someone who wants help you know, in algebra or in geometry from a Spanish speaker. Okay, so those were the five options we have here in the expert help section. Before we move down the page here, I'm just going to pause again for another few seconds to see if anyone has any questions they'd like to type out. So I'll go ahead and do so, um, and if I don't see anything, uh, we'll move on to the next section. Okay, um, I haven't seen any questions yet, so I'll go ahead and move on. Um, we're going to skip the job now section for right now. We're going to finish up with the sections down here at the bottom, uh, and then we'll come back up here and look at job now. So our study section down here, uh, the first button that we have available is for our test center. So the test center is where a student could go to take an academic practice test. Um, you'll, you'll need a username and password to use the test center as well. Uh, so that your test results can be saved within your account. Um, and I didn't mention it uh, specifically, but you also need one for the send question button. Uh, for live help, skills building, and language lab, the system will allow you to connect as a guest. For the test center down here, if I click on that button, I'm already signed in, so it takes me directly to the test center page here. So on the left-hand side, I can just choose a grade level and then a subject and I can take a practice test in that subject. On the right hand side here, 
We also offer practice tests for the ACT and the SAT. So if, for example, I want to take an ACT math quiz, I can choose that here, click on take a test, and I can take this practice test right here. So ACT math quiz 1 has been assigned to me. I can click on the name of it here and work through that practice test. Um, any tests that you've taken, the results will be saved right here on this page as well. So over on the right hand side, you have a My Tests option. So this is where your test results will be saved here within your account. You can retake any quizzes you've already taken directly from this page. You can look through a quiz you've taken just to see which uh, questions you answered incorrectly and what the correct answers were. Um, and the way a lot of students like to use this part of the service um, is they'll take a practice test and then sign in with one of our live tutors. And our tutors are able to access the student's test results. So the student can log in with a live tutor and have that tutor go over the questions they answered incorrectly. Back on the main page here, back in the study section, right next to the test center button, we have Flashbulb. So this is basically an online flashcard service, um, and it's great to help with memorization. So if you just create uh, standard hard copies of flashcards, um, you know, that's one way to work on memorizing. But if you create them here in Flashbulb, you'll have a lot of additional options that will help with memorizing. So once you've entered your cards, so your vocab words and definitions, um, or whatever it is that you're trying to memorize, they'll be saved here. Uh, so you can access them again anytime. Uh, and you can play different games here uh, that our system will automatically create for you once you've entered the cards. Uh, so you can play different games to help with memorization. You can take a quiz or a test. Sorry, I don't know why it wasn't loading there for a second. But here's the flashbulb page. Um, so you use the Create Now button here on the left to enter your cards. Um, then they'll be saved here. You can play different games. You can take a quiz or a test uh, to test your knowledge. You can print those cards out. So there will be a lot of options that will help with memorization um, for any students who are working on that. So those were the two options here in the study section. If we move down, uh, we have the collaborate section down here at the bottom. And our first option here is Meet. Um, essentially, the Meet feature allows you to schedule an online meeting with whoever you would like to invite. So it uses our online classroom, just like when you connect with one of our live tutors in a live session, um, except that in a Meet session here, you are not connecting with our tutors. You're only connecting with the people that you invite to the session. So this, uh, a Meet session might be scheduled by a student with fellow students to host a study group to prepare for a test. Um, it might be used by uh, a local tutor or even a teacher um, to host uh, some extra help outside of the classroom to give some extra help to some of their students. Um, anything you can, any reason you can think of for hosting an online meeting here, um, you can do this. Uh, you can do that using the Meet feature right here. So if I click on the Meet button, I have to schedule a Meet session. So I do that by typing in the email addresses here of everybody that I'd, that I'd like to invite. Then I put in the date and time of the session, and then a brief description of the meeting, and I click on Send. So that will send that invitation to everybody whose email address I entered. Uh, they'll be able to click on that uh, on a link sent to them in their email to join the session. So they won't need to have a username and password. Um, only the person scheduling the meeting here would be required to have a username and password. Um, once the session is scheduled, It'll be saved in the calendar option over here on the right. So this is where I would go to start a Meet session that I have scheduled. Right here is one that I've scheduled. So I can click on the Enter button to start this session. Uh, we'll look at the Meet session a little bit later. Uh, I want to show you a regular live session with our tutors before we look at a Meet session. Um, they're very similar. There's only a couple differences, uh, but I'll highlight those a little bit later. Um, so as I just mentioned, um, the way these sessions work, uh, you basically have the same online classroom as when you connect with our live tutors. Um, so we'll, sort of, we'll go over all those features that you'll have uh, a little bit later in the webinar. And then next to the Meet feature, we have what we call Brainwave. Uh, Brainwave basically gives you a smart board and allows you to type out, draw, copy and paste, uh, basically do whatever you'd like on our smart board, and it creates a little video recording of whatever you put there on the board. So you might create a little video of how to solve a multi-step math problem, how to balance a chemistry equation, um, something like that. 
when you create one of these videos, it's saved within your account and they can be sent to other people. So if I click on Brainwave here, this is a Brainwave that I created earlier. I can click on the play button right here and that will replay uh, the Brainwave recording here that I created. You have the same options when you're creating a Brainwave as you do in one of our live sessions. So we have a graph tool, a line tool, you'll see I changed the color here of different things I put on the board. So these are all options you have. Um, I'll show you how you use these when we're connected in the live session. Um, you can also type in our chat box down here. That's also recorded. So it's a great tool um, that a student can use to practice. They'll have a little recording here. These can also be sent to other people. So these could be sent between students or they could even be created by you know, a tutor or a teacher and sent to their students. Uh, and the way you send them is just by clicking on the envelope icon over here. You'll have to type in the email address of the person you want to send it to. Um, and then that will be sent to that person as a link they can click on to play uh, the recording. You can also click on the Brainwave Library tab here and then type in a keyword to see if there are any other Brainwaves created on a topic that you're working on. Um, the Brainwaves that are saved here are, for the most part, student created, um, so they may not be accurate. But it's just here as an additional tool if a student would like to use it. Um, and you can always access your Brainwaves page by clicking on the Brainwaves option over here on the right. So again, you'll need a username and password to create Brainwaves so that they can be stored within your account. Okay, um, I'm going to pause again now just to see if anyone has any questions they'd like to type out. Um, so go ahead and do that now and then we'll move on to the next section. Um, if possible, could you, could, I, could you just type out a quick message, everyone who's signed in, just to let me know the audio is working. Um, I want to make sure you're not typing out questions and maybe I'm not seeing them for some reason. Um, so just type out a quick message, a uh, quick word or something in the chat box. just want to make sure everything's working correctly. Okay, great. Yeah, I see it's working correctly. That's no problem. I just want to make sure I wasn't missing any questions. Um, okay, so I'll move on to the next section here. Um, I'm actually going to skip job now, uh, which we actually skipped before. But um, I'm going to go back up here to the very top of the page where we have this yellow adult learners button. Um, so this is where an adult learner would go. So uh, this would probably only be relevant for libraries um, or maybe higher ed institutions as well um, who might have adults using the service. Uh, so. You know, you have an adult learner come into your library who is preparing to take a test, you know, or a certification exam of some kind, or they're going back to school and taking some classes, you know, preparing for the GED, something like that. Uh, we have some resources here for them in the adult learners button right here. So we call this our adult learning center. Here on this page, uh, over here on the right hand side, under where it says lifelong learning, we basically have five of the exact same services that we just saw back on the main page. They're just geared towards adults here in the Adult Learning Center. So we have live tutoring and skills building where you can connect with our live tutors. The writing lab where you can send in a piece of writing to have it reviewed. The test center where you can take a practice test. And 24-7 help here where you can just send in a question any time of day. So those uh, five services there work the same way as the ones we just saw back on the main page. Over here on the left, we have some additional options for adult learners. We have an option for the GED test. So if you have any, anyone who's preparing for the GED, uh, they can use the options that we have available here. So we have study materials available under number one. Under number two here in the middle, you can connect with a live tutor to help you prepare for the GED test. And then on the right, 
you can take a practice test. So we have those available for all sections of the GED test here. Um, and also I know the GED is being updated starting in January. So we're currently working on uh, creating new tests to make sure they match the new uh, GED tests that will be coming out next year. Below the GED button, we have prepare for the U.S. citizenship test. So we have the same options here as we did for the GED. So we have study materials, live tutors, and then practice tests, all available for uh, U.S. citizenship test prep. Below that button, we have write a winning resume. So if you have any adults who are uh, in the job search process, we offer some help here with writing a resume. Um, there's a little bit of overlap between what we'll see here and then what we'll see within JobNow, um, but we, we have options for resumes within JobNow and here within the Adult Learning Center. So we have here on the left uh, online resources that will help you with writing a resume. In the middle, we have an upload resume button. So this works just like our writing lab, which was where you could send in a piece of writing to have it reviewed by our writing tutors. You can do the exact same thing here with the copy of your resume. Um, and your cover letters as well. We're happy to take cover letters. Um, and then on the right, we have live resume tutors available. So you can connect uh, and go over your resume in a live session in real time or just ask any questions you have about resumes. Below the resume button, we have Microsoft Office help. So here we offer help with Microsoft Word, Excel, and PowerPoint up to the most recent versions of those programs. So here on the left, we have online resources, including some tutorials. And then on the right, you can connect with a live tutor and ask any questions you have about Excel, PowerPoint, or Word. And then below the Microsoft Office button, we have career resources. So this sort of goes along with the resume button here. These are lists of websites that can be used to find available jobs to apply to. So we have nationwide options. So these are national job search websites. We have general job sites, job sites for students and recent graduates, and also job sites for veterans. And then we also have local, op uh, local resources. So this will be customized for the state of Nevada here. Okay, so that's our Adult Learning Center. If I click on the Home button here, it'll take me back to the page that we started on. So back on this page here. Um, so Job Now will be the next option that, that we'll look at here. But again, I just want to pause for a few seconds to again give time to anyone to type out uh, questions. So I'll pause for a few seconds again. Um, there's a question saying, is Java required for the live chat sessions? Um, and yes, Java is how, how the live sessions work. Um, so yes, you, you will need to have Java. Okay, um, so I'll move on now to the Job Now section, which we skipped over earlier, which is right here. So we have a few different buttons here available in Job Now. Um, so this is our job search help service. So for anyone who's uh, looking for a job, we offer help uh, with uh, most of the steps within that process. So our first button here is for Write the Resume. So this is where you'll see a little bit of the overlap between the resume section here and in the Adult Learning Center. So for Write the Resume here, we have Resume Templates. So we have four different templates here that you can use to create a resume. So this can be used by someone who's never created a resume before um, or who is looking to create a new resume. You click on the links down here and you can open up our Word document template. We have some resources that will help you write a better resume. And then again we have a resume lab here. So that's where you can send in your resume and have it reviewed by one of our resume editors. 
Um, and you also have that option within the Adult Learning Center. So that was our Write the Resume button. Right next to that, we have Ace the Interview. So here for Interview Help Prep, we have the Live Interview Coach button on the left. So this will connect you with one of our live interview coaches in our online classroom, uh, and they can help you with preparing for an upcoming interview. Um, our live sessions always look the same. They use the same online classroom, um, whether it's for an interview session or a math session. So we'll look at that a little bit later, as I mentioned uh, in the beginning of the webinar. Next to that, we have interview tips. So these are just some basic tips for before, during, and after the interview. So you can read through these. Um, they're helpful for someone who has never been on an interview um, or maybe who hasn't been for many years. Uh, and then next to the interview tips option, we have online resources. So these are just some links to websites that can be used to help you prepare for an upcoming interview. Um, there's a question saying, and the job, resume, interview, coaching services are available free. Um, so basically everything here is free to your students or to your patrons. Um, you know, a patron's never going to have to sign in and give us a credit card or anything like that. Um, you know, it's paid for. Uh, well, I don't, don't want to get it. I don't know exactly how it's paid for, but it's from the Nevada State Library Association. So I assume it's paid for by them directly to us. So it's free for, for the user, for the student or the patron. Um, back here within the Job Now section, that was the Resume button and Ace the Interview. And then the last one here is Links and Tips. So if I click on that option, we have two buttons here. Um, the Career Assessments button here on the left. Um, this can be used to, use, uh, to take any one of these career assessments here. So for someone who has no idea what field or industry they'd like to go into, um, they can take one of these options here. A lot of people like to take one of these and then log back in with our tutors. Um, and you know, our tutors can help you prepare a resume around the industry you were directed to, find available jobs in your area within that industry, anything like that. Um, next to the Career Assessments button, we have Job Resources. So we also have the Job Resources button within the Adult Learning Center. So we have the nationwide and local resources for job seekers here. So these will be the same links. They're just uh, saved here within the Job Now service and also within the Adult Learning Center. Um, okay, so those are pretty much all of the buttons available here um, on the main page. Uh, over here on the right hand side, we've looked at a number of these learning account features. Um, I just want to touch on the ones that we haven't looked at yet. Uh, my account will just show you your username and password in case you forget them. Uh, view past sessions, basically there are live, I'm sorry, there are recordings made of all of your live tutoring sessions and they're saved right here within your account. Um, this only works if you have a username and password. So if you remember, I mentioned at the beginning, you can connect with our live tutors without a username and password. Um, if you do that using one of our guest accounts, the session is not automatically recorded and saved because you're using a guest account that will be used by uh, any number of people in the future. But if you have your own account, your live tutoring sessions are recorded and saved here. If I click on this button, so you'd be able to re-watch any of those tutoring sessions here. Um, the Message Center, My Tests, Calendar, we looked at all those options um, as well as Brainwaves here. And then Cloud Pack down at the bottom, I mentioned briefly, but we'll look at it in a little more detail right now. So if I click on my Cloud Pack, this window here opens up. So as I mentioned before, Cloud Pack is basically a storage device. So you can store documents here in your Cloud Pack. Um, so I might add some folders here. Say so I have some English papers I'd like to upload. Maybe I have some class notes I've taken that I want to upload. Um, so you can add whatever folders you'd like here. And you just click on the folder and add a document. Um, you can also create documents directly from Cloud Pack here. So in one capacity, it'll work just as a backup storage device. But the nice thing about Cloud Pack is that you can access any of the documents you have saved there when you're connected in a live session. So you might have a paper saved there. Um, you connect with one of our writing tutors. You can access that paper and show it to the tutor you're connected with in the live session. Um, there's a question saying, are files that you save to my cloud pack secure? 
Um, yes, they're secure. The only person who would be able to access those, um, well, it would be you and anyone you give your username and password to. So they would have to sign into your account to see those files. Um, you can choose to share them with tutors um, as well, but again, that's up to the student. The, the tutor is not, not able to access your files unless you specifically open it and send it to the, the tutor. Um, okay, so those were, again, pretty much all of the options here that you have. Um, the, one of the last things I want to do is connect for an actual live session now to show you what our online classroom looks like and how that works. Um, so I'll click on the live help button right here. Uh, we saw a number of different uh, areas throughout our service where you can connect with our live tutors. We had some within the Adult Learning Center. Uh, we have the interview coach you can connect with, the skills building option here. You can connect with our GED tutors, the U.S. citizenship tutors. Um, so there's a lot of options, uh, but the live help button right here is probably the most frequently used uh, live help button. So if you click on that button there, I then enter a grade level and a subject and then I click on the Get Live Help button to connect. So this is our online classroom here that's opening up. Again, the online classroom will always look the same no matter what subject you choose. So this right here is our online classroom. So this is during our, our live tutoring hours. So this is a tutor who happens to be online, uh, Nick R2. I'm just going to type them out a quick message to let them know I don't need an actual session. Um, so as you can see, uh, the tutor and I are typing back and forth down here in our instant message chat box. So this is where most of the back and forth communication will occur in our online classroom. Um, the sessions will pretty much always begin with the tutor asking how they can help uh, because the tutor will see the subject you chose, in this case uh, ninth grade writing I think or eighth grade writing, um, but the, the tutor wouldn't know anything other than that. So the chat box here is where most of that back and forth communication occurs. Then we also have the whiteboard space up here at the top. Um, this area can be used for a lot of different things. Um, one of those was the skills building session that we mentioned uh, at the very beginning. So that's where a student can choose you know, a, a topic like uh, powers and exponents, something like that that they need some help with. Um, and our tutor might load a lesson on you know, that topic, on you know, multiplying powers and exponents, you know, or whatever the topic is. They could load our lesson right here into the whiteboard space. So again, we have lessons on all standard topics, um, and the tutor would work through that lesson with the student. Um, most often, though, students log in you know, with a homework question or something like that, that they're struggling with. So they can use all these buttons we have here to type out their question up here on the whiteboard. Um, so I'll quickly go through some of these options. Um, it works just like Microsoft Paint or uh, a similar program, if anyone has used something like that. So you choose the button you'd like to work with, and it will let you type or draw on the board. So you can freehand draw, you can erase, you can click anywhere on the board and then type. Um, so these are all tools that will help with you know, typing out a math problem on the board, typing out a chemistry equation, you know, whatever it is that the student needs help with. Um, so I won't go through all the options, but you'll see if you put your mouse over each one, you'll get a little description of what that button does. Um, a couple of the more useful options here, uh, this one is paste text or image. So anything that can be copied and pasted can be pasted onto our whiteboard. You can even use a screen capturing tool and then paste the whole screen onto our whiteboard. Um, or you can take a paragraph from a paper you're working on, paste that onto the whiteboard so the tutor is able to see it. Um, so that's a useful tool. If you're working on a math problem that involves either a number line or a graph, you can use this button right here where you can choose either a number line or a graph. So let's say I change the color and then I choose the graph so you can put a graph on the board. Um, and you can change the color of anything you put on the board using the color tool right here. Um, we also have a superscript and a subscript button down at the bottom to make uh, putting equations on the board easier um, and a number of other tools available here as well. Um, up at the top we have a print option so this will let you print out the whiteboard um, so if, if the, the tutor helps you go over a very difficult question you can use the print button to print out a hard copy um, but, of course, you don't need to do that because you also have back here um, on the website, you have the View Past Sessions button. So you can always log back in and re-watch your live tutoring sessions right here, assuming you signed in with the username and password. 
Um, if you did not sign in with a username and password, say you signed in as a guest, um, or even if you did sign in with a username and password, we have this button right here, which basically allows you to enter either your own email address or somebody else's, and then it will send a link to that email address that can be used to view the session recording. So that can be used by a guest or by a registered user, and then you'd have access to your session recording in your email rather than having to sign into your BrainFuse account. Um, this button right here that we skipped over, it, it says send file. This basically lets you upload a document directly to the tutor that you're connected with. So if you connect with a writing tutor and you're working on a paper, you can upload a document to them right here. And then the final button over here on the right is for CloudPack Explorer. So CloudPack was the storage device that we saw before. So any documents you have stored in your CloudPack can be accessed using the Explorer right here and they can be uploaded right onto our whiteboard. So it's just another way to share uh, information with the tutor you're connected with. So you have the option of using CloudPack, you can use the send file button, or you can also just copy and paste onto the board. There's a number of different ways you can share information with your tutor. Um, the audio option down here, this will always be deactivated when you're connected with our tutors. Um, so all of the communication is done through the chat box and through the whiteboard space. Um, you are able to use audio if you're connected in a Meet session. So that's one of those live sessions that you schedule using our online classroom here with whoever you'd like to invite. So it's not using our tutors. Um, and again, we'll look at a Meet session. Um, I just wanted to show you the regular online classroom here first. Um, so before we go ahead and look at Meet, um, does anyone have any questions about how our online classroom here will work? Okay, um, I haven't seen any questions yet, um, so I'll go ahead and close uh, this window here. You'll see when I do that, you get a little survey that pops up, so students are able to provide feedback to us uh, if they'd like to. Um, one of the last things I want to do, uh, again, is show you a Meet session here. So Meet is all the way down here at the bottom of the page. If you click on the Meet button, you're taken to this page right here, which is where you schedule a Meet session. Once you have one scheduled, it'll be stored here in your calendar. So I have one here that I scheduled earlier. So I can start that session by clicking the enter button right here. So you'll see the online classroom that opens up here looks pretty much the same uh, as the one that we just saw. Uh, and it really is, there's only a few small differences in a meet session here that I want to highlight. Um, one of those is the audio option. So audio will be active here in a meet session. So everyone connected in the meet session will be able to use audio. Um, you can also have any number of participants here in a Meet session. So it might be five or six or more students connecting to host a study group to prepare for a test, you know, or a teacher signing in to give extra help to you know, two or three of their students outside of the classroom. So you can have multiple participants. And then anyone signed in would be able to see anything typed in the chat box or anything put on the whiteboard up here. So it would be a joint session. Um, I see there's a question saying, what is the maximum amount of people that can be invited to a meet group? I don't actually know. Um, I've never, we've never had anyone try and, and create one with more people than are allowed. So I don't know if there is an actual maximum, but I know if you, you want to have 5 or 10 or 15 people, um, that's, that's fine. If you do run into an issue where it's not letting you use it with uh, the number of people you'd like to, um, just let us know and I can check with our tech department to see if that can be expanded. Um, okay, so getting back to the differences here between a regular live session with our tutors and one of these meet sessions, um, really the only other one that I want to highlight um, is if the session is being run by a tutor or a teacher, you know, someone who's really giving instruction to the other people in the session, there'll be an option where you can click on each of the participants' names down here in the participants box, and you can give each person a private whiteboard. So what that means is next to our public tab up here, 
you'll have a different tab for each private whiteboard that you enable. You can give one to each student in the session. And then on that whiteboard, um, anything placed there will only be visible to that one student and to the moderator of the session. So the moderator is the person who scheduled the session. Um, so it's a great way for a tutor or a teacher to give extra help to one of, one of the students if they happen to be struggling. Um, and the moderator will have the tabs easily accessible right here. They can quickly click on each one to flip back and forth between the different tabs. Um, okay, so that's how our Meet sessions work. If we go back to the home page here, um, that's pretty much everything I wanted to go over today. So we went over the Adult Learners button up here, all the options we have down here in each of these sections, um, as well as the lear Learning Account features over here on the right. Um, so if anyone has any questions now, um, you can go ahead and type those out. Um, I'll just quickly open up the other, uh, basically the other option here that will be used by any of the higher ed institutions. I believe we'll have this layout right here, which again, if you look through it, you'll see the same buttons um, for the most part. I think there's a couple different ones here in the study section where we have GRE, AccuPlacer, and Compass Prep help, um, sort of higher ed topics, so they're listed here. Other than that, though, you'll have the exact same buttons available within these options. Um, and the learning account features are located up here along the top of the page rather than along the right-hand side. Um, the Adult Learning Center, again, is located here instead of the yellow button up at the top. So it's just a different layout that we use, um, but the services offered here will all be the same. Um, if anyone has any questions about that, any differences you know, in the service, uh, I'd be happy to answer questions about that as well. Um, so that's pretty much it for me for today, uh, but I'm happy to stay signed in as long as necessary to answer any questions um, or take any comments, anything like that. So go ahead and type those out now. Um, I'd be happy to address them. Um, for anyone that needs to sign out, you know, go ahead and do so. Um, and I hope the webinar was useful. But again, I'll stay logged in for at least, at least another few minutes to see if anyone has any questions.